Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be making two compounds, the two that I'm going to be making for my um, Froxin and Ferozin's video, and they are going to be DNAF and D or and AAAF. As always, I would like to thank my Templars Dollar patrons for their huge donations. Okay, so let's hop right into the video. So for the first compound I'm going to be trying to make today is going to be the AAAF. This stands for 3 amino 3 azido 4 4 azoxyferazone. While researching this compound, I actually found that it initially makes the diazido form, which then quickly decomposes into the, uh, you know, amino and azido instead of just diazido. So first steps first, and we have to carry out a diazination. So for this step, we're going to dissolve the DAAF that we made in the last video into 98% sulfuric acid that I bought online. I'm then going to dissolve um, sodium nitrite also into another solution of 98% sulfuric acid. Once these are both cooled to between 0 and 5 Celsius, I add the DAAF solution in sulfuric acid into the sodium nitrite solution. Once these additions are done, I'm going to now add glacial acetic acid to this solution. Um, this is where it gets really hard and starts to piss me off because it becomes this really orange syrupy thick liquid that my stir bar cannot stir in, gets completely clogged up. Uh, these Chinese stir bars just don't work very well at all. And this is where I started to get impatient. Along with the glacial acetic acid making this solution very hard to work with due to it making it syrupy and thick, it also generated a ton of heat when it um, was added. And obviously the heat can't be stirred away because stir pot doesn't work. Once I finally finished adding everything and got past probably the shittiest step I've done in a long time, I was ready to add the sodium azide. Yes, you heard me right. I'm adding sodium azide to a very concentrated solution of sulfuric and acetic acid. Any sane chemist will tell you that adding sodium azide to acidic solutions is a bad idea, and I completely agree with this. So, this is when I'd move my garage chemistry to outside patio table chemistry. So now I just dissolve the sodium azide into water, put it in the separatory funnel, and I'm ready to add it. The additions obviously produce a lot of gas. I hope this isn't just hydrozoic acid. I hope it's actually some other gases that are being formed. So, uh, yeah. Also, the solution colors to a very bright yellow, which is exactly what we should see. Only problem is I got less than a 1% yield because I uh, got very impatient and decided that temperature control wasn't worth my time because I was still pissed off from before how it wasn't stirring. Well, yeah, turns out that letting it heat up too much killed all my product. Looking on the bright side, at least I got some yield versus absolutely nothing. So I just do a burn test with this because literally there's just no point of keeping it. Uh, one good indication that this is my product is the red flame that it produces when burned. You can see that it's more red than orange slash yellow, so, uh, I mean, that at least shows that I got the AAAF, even if it was extremely low yield. Okay, so now let's go on to the second compound that actually did work. Uh, so for this, we're going to do kind of the same setup. We need to dissolve our DAAF into sulfuric acid again, so that's another long process. But this time, we're going to set up a solution that consists of hydrogen peroxide, sulfuric acid, and ammonium persulfate. This solution, especially when heated, is very good at oxidizing things, and that is exactly what we're going to do. So we're essentially oxidizing the diamino for DAAF into dinitro, literally removing the hydrogens and putting in oxygens to make the nitros. This process is relatively straightforward, however, it takes forever. It is an eight hour long synthesis. However, I found that after around six hours, it really doesn't impact yield. This seemingly small change is actually huge because it makes the detonation velocity of uh, DAAF go from around 8,000 and being, you know, more insensitive than something like pure nitromethane, all the way up to uh, nearly 10,000. Uh, with uh, the sensitivity that about twice of PETN. Once all the DAAF is dissolved into the sulfuric acid, we slowly add it to the ammonium persulfate slash H2O2 uh, mixture. And as you can see, it forms a very, very fine orange precipitate. 
It looks yellow at first, but it's okay, it becomes orange at the end. This requires careful temperature control because we don't want premature oxidation. Once we have added thing, we have this nice orange fine precipitate, and now we get to heat it up to 40 degrees Celsius. Once my water bath hits 40 degrees Celsius, I throw it in, and as you can see, it starts to produce a lot of foam. At the beginning, this foam is orange and the solution is still really, uh, you know, filled with that orange precipitate. However, as we go on, this foam color becomes to be a very bright yellow. And that is exactly what we're looking for because that is our product. This is what it looks like after seven hours. And I'm not gonna wait the full eight hours because it actually looked like this at six hours as well. If anything, I feel like I'm losing yield. So I'm gonna pull it off a little early. Now I just pour it off and filter it in my Buchner funnel, and I get this beautiful yellow powder. Now I could stop here, but the paper says that I need to recrystallize it in DCM. So I dissolve it up in DCM, but at this point it was like 11 o'clock at night and I was getting tired, so I decided I would just leave it in the DCM and, you know, deal with it tomorrow. At this point, I'm in the home stretch. I'm getting excited and I'm ready to actually finish up this project. So I just evaporate the DCM, I desiccate it, and I have my final product. At this point, there's only one way I know how to actually test this product, so let's do it. <sighs> yep, didn't fucking work. Turns out leaving the uh, product in the DCM overnight ruined approximately uh, a month of work. At this point, I can officially say that this synthesis broke me. I just did not feel like doing chemistry ever again. However, I decided that it was best to redo the entire synthesis and speed run it as fast as I can. This time, instead of around a month, it only took me seven days. And uh, this time I did not recrystallize the product. So I'm just gonna use the crude form of it this time. No risking it with the DCM, okay? There's only one way to test to see if this works. Thank you everybody so much for watching. See you in a month.